Hey guys, we're gonna look at Debussy Arabesque number one. I really wanted to do a video on this piece and I never learned it. So I thought, you know what? Uh, this would be a great piece to do a video on how to, how to learn the piece. How are we gonna learn this piece? So I'm gonna kind of uh, start learning it with you a little bit so we can look at all the different ways that we can practice it, okay? So, uh, let's see, um, I've sight read this piece many times before, I taught it at least once, and so, you know, so I can sort of play through it, but it's not like something really uh, that I know that well. So let's, let's look at this. Let's start from the very beginning. Um, I'm inclined to play just like, I'm actually not sure where it's going, let's just start. It's not true when I say I've never played this piece or I haven't learned it. As you can see, I have looked at it before. I've just really never looked at it very seriously. And I have taught it, so there's a few things here. There's something really amazing in the beginning. Uh, you have to use the pedal, actually. So you can pedal twice a bar. Pedal here, here, here. Something in the dynamic also that's really amazing here. You go there. Something like that, although that might not be the only way of doing it. But I'm inclined to do that for now. So let's see where this goes. So this is one idea. We kind of crescendo to the top of this uh, sort of circular like thing. things that that can be nice to do when you have an idea say okay I like to do it like this let's crescendo here we're gonna do it like that is find other possibilities see if there's another way of doing this you know you... see now we're kind of exaggerating things by doing this but we find out that maybe that's not the only way of playing it to go you maybe it's more interesting to go you so we're kind of like, did we do like a sort of crescendo? Now I really like this. Crescendo more in these notes. And then, especially this C sharp E, and then let go a little bit. And then this is interesting. So it's kind of like, now we're doing the opposite of what we said in the beginning. We're going, we're going less towards the G sharp, but you remove the pedal. I think that's actually what I was doing in the beginning. You're removing the pedal so that that note kind of, this G sharp, even though it's softer than, than these two notes, maybe this as well. The fact that you remove the pedal, it actually comes out when we hear it. So you, this in a video in French so this is a make sure that you know if you haven't seen videos about the wheel you've got to watch the videos about the wheel so that you learn how to do transfer the weight in this and like this then all these things that we're talking about about dynamics are going to come out quite naturally because it's very different to rely entirely on the fingers and, or to use the arm rather to do this. <clears throat> it's really not the same. Okay, another thing we see is... But we don't really have that B. And this A and then supposedly G, which we only get again at the end. And, but then we have this bass that's very clear. Now we 
got to find a way of making this uh, okay as far as tempo and rubato goes because we don't want to... Of course, it's full of rubato, but we just have to always find a way of doing it tastefully. I personally think the beginning should stay pretty square. If it, if it moves around too much... <laughs> kind of uh, structure of this circular repetitive thing that's very classical in a way. Okay, so let's see, how could we practice this, you know? Uh, um, starting here. that we want to hear more and by going in the front like this we're also establishing the weight in in such a way that it's going to be very easy to transfer through the wheel like this so just practice like this so you can go in here and then by the time you get to the thumb you're already coming back out towards you and then back in, and like that. And see how the right hand is not different. So see by playing in the front, and then again, when you play in the front, it's the same thing I just said. You're establishing the weight in such a way that it's easy to transfer. So you have this yada dee kind of thing, yada dee, going down, and then see how this is bringing this in front. So it's very important to know which notes you want to play in the front. Second A that comes on the second beat is delayed a bit. And now what I'm finding is that if you widen up here, basically slowing down too much before where it actually says to slow down, it's not going to make much sense anymore. So maybe it's better to keep this kind of square. That's what it looks like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think that sounds better. Now we're still doing the writ before it's written. So sometimes it's nice to try doing it exactly the way it's written and see what happens. So let's see what that is. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But I'm really inclined to... But maybe it's just too much. So maybe... So often what I'll do in this case is, you know, with different ideas, just let it marinate, you know? And you have to put the ideas in, in a bigger context. So if you can't play the first five, six bars easily, it's going to be kind of hard to... It's going to be hard to know what's appropriate, you know, as far as, like, how we slow down. But if you already know how to play the piece, then take your idea and put it back in context. Start at the beginning again and see if it works. It seems to work, but it seems a little almost unnatural to me to go... Two, 
come back down the same. Three, one, two, five. Five, two, one, three, two. This one, five, two, one, four, two. Back down the same way. Because it's not really, you know, again here, that wouldn't be a good idea. Five, four. So you could do five, two, one, two, one. But then two, one, two, one is kind of annoying as well. So you'd have to do five, three, two, one, two. Or we could always take that note with the right hand. That's also a possibility. We'll try to avoid that for now. So how about, since two, one, two, one is kind of annoying, why don't we do two, one, three, one. It's not just, you know, about whether you like fingering, but sometimes if you're not used to certain fingerings, you actually have to get used to them and then you like them. So you have to learn it before you really uh, get comfortable with it. Sometimes that might not be the case with this, but when you're doing rotation, what happens is we're twisting the arm like this and it's very easy to do with fingers that go from one side of the hand to the other. So. You know, 3-4 already is almost weak, but it's okay for here. 3-4 to the other side. 2-5, other side. 1-4-2-3-1-3. Three, three. So we're always zigzagging from this side of the hand and to this side with 3 in the middle. That's the best way to do your rotation, just because of the way the hand is made. Okay, so that's the one thing I would change is at the very end, instead of doing three, one, four, two, I would go straight to four, one, four, two. So it feels so much better to go a three, four, two, five, rather than three, four, two, three. That's what usually screws things up. is 
that we have sol fa sol fa sol fa sol fa sol and that should help slow down okay i know this doesn't sound like i'm learning this piece very much but that's okay i am learning it at the same time i don't know it that very well It'll sound something like this. Sort of like that. That's a really good way to practice. So if you keep doing that... You'll find that when you put everything, you, you stop stopping there, you, you play it the way it's written again, you have that shape to it. Just some extra notes in the right hand. So see how if you're playing them in the front, they just come out so beautifully. So in order to play in the front, some things have to be backwards so that you can actually go back in the front. So this works perfectly here because when you're doing this part of the wheel, the part that goes down like this, it's very natural to pull a little in inwards towards yourself. You know? So see this one in the front, and then come back and go in the front, and then you have all the time in the world to come back here. So every single one of these notes, five notes, they're all played in the front. So have a look at that. That seems like an important note now, because we didn't have that before. sense of this. I'm still not quite sure. Not quite clear. Honestly, it's not quite clear to me yet. starting it slower, but usually a writ or progressively getting slower. So what would that give? Maybe that makes more sense, but it still feels like too much. like 
that's more coherent than what I just did before. So basically where it says writ, try, see if you like it, slow down more, you know, the, the next two beats after. So you get... Just like do it again, always find 
you know, how can it, how can it get to the next level? If you have an idea of what it might feel like if you imagine yourself before you've actually finished learning this piece, if you imagine yourself performing it, what would it be like to be on stage performing this piece and you know it really well, you have right away an idea of, well, I need to do something more to get there. So how can I get there? This is kind of annoying because we have... Unless you do that. It's kind of complicated to change the fingers here. But one of the advantages of that is if you did want to take time here, it's forcing you to do a rubato. So it could be appropriate to do a two one and then switch. You know, I put the three and then the four and then the five and then I have three on F sharp. So that's the advantage sometimes of having to change the fingers on the notes that you've already played without replaying them is it's forcing you to take time in a way that can, can easily make things very expressive. So if you don't do that, you can just go like this, use the pedal and take this with 2-4. very well. I'm just double checking, make sure it's not bullshit what I'm saying, but see how the, you take a little rubato in the, in the eighth notes, and then when you have a triplet, you just play it straight, yup, up, 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 rather than doing, we don't really understand that it's a triplet, so. That's a very good idea. Same thing here. Straight to it and take time here and here. Now we have this line here. And with the rubato. If you like it. pieces. So it's a very strange addition. His greatest piano solos compiled by Alexander Sheely. Yeah. So, I mean, it says moso, but I think that means pumo, so you which means a little faster. when you have this sort of thing instead of just going to bring out where the left hand comes in right there so you have and then it says a tempo 
tempo. So that must be back to the tempo rubato, which is a little slower than this. So this is just perfect music for, for practicing these wheels. It's almost, it's easy to go up, but we're a little uh, uh, cornered here. We're a little stuck here. Since they're slurred, play it like this, 1-5, and switch, you can let go of the fifth finger, you have to pedal anyway, switch the thumb for a two, and that gives you this pivot to go like this, so it's a way of making octaves sound more legato. There's no sforzando there. So you could do that if you wanted. So again, I think it's a great idea to do, especially like kind of fat eighth notes that are have lots of rubato. And then when you have the triplets, strict triplets, maybe even more than strict, even a little faster. So fat notes here. dynamics most of them anyway they'll write some but it's up to you to figure out all the micro dynamics inside that aren't written so risoluto sounds like we've we have a certain resolve let's say uh, we know where we're going it's very confident even though we're going in another key we're very we're very committed to it we're very uh, sure about what's going on You have those triplets, so you can keep them very straight. They are triplets, yes. Diminuendo molto. So maybe I'm too soft here. I'm not sure. I'm really inclined to go. It starts uh, louder. And pew diminuendo. Interesting. Again, it would 
be impossible to find out if that would be a better or or not way of playing it without really putting it in context. So it, it'll make more sense if we start from here again. <laughs> Diminuendo molto and then più diminuendo, even more diminuendo, it would seem kind of impossible to do if we did. There's nowhere left to go. We would not be able to do that. So we probably need a bit of sound. Here. But I would recommend pedaling in the middle of that bar. Let's just keep going. See how nice it is to if all these notes are played in the front. Actually, that's probably the best way to practice it is just like this. Play them really in the front with the arm. Like this. Without playing the other triplets in the right hand. And then play the triplets but maintain this movement of always those little lines on those last two notes. He seems to do that when he really wants these... Uh, he didn't write it in the beginning, at least not in this edition. When, when we're taking time on the notes, you know, I, I, I think anyway, he really wants us to take time on those notes. Same thing you have like... Or just like we had... those lines on them again. Okay, now this is the same until we get to... So again, see, we're preparing ourselves to always play the two notes at the same time in the front. confusing for fingering, so maybe we should look at that. So you can start with three, four, one, but then put the four back on the A. And then two, five on the next tritone. the finger, didn't I? Four, three, two, switch to a four, five, four. Well, it just feels very natural there. So try that. Three, four, five, four, three, switch to three, four, four, five, four. So maybe we start the crescendo more in the bass. So the bass sounds something like this. I see. And then here we start with the really green. Could be. Because if we did too much of the bass in the beginning, it would really take away. It'd be too much. 
So you know. So keep it more on the top. And then bring out the bass the next two bars, even if the crescendo only is written in the first two bars. Syncopations again. And fingering for here. Four, three. Switch to three, two, four. Exact same thing as before. Five, four. This note is very nice. possibilities now for for fingering and how we could arrange it you know do we really need to take that C sharp in the left hand which is not so complicated but we could also go we could take something back with the left hand in the score if we do this fingering three or four two one and then three or two if not that's also a possible possibility In this case, I think it really depends where your challenge is. So, you know, what I would do for myself is I would play it a few times and see where the mistakes are, what's hard, you know? Okay, the last note, but that is completely irrelevant. So it seems kind of easy. says diminuendo Just start like this and we do diminuendo. It's kind of hard to make it to the end. So what brings out the actual shape of the thing isn't necessarily going to do a crescendo to the top, but somewhere just after the beginning. So you would go Feels like we're going, we're going in less. We're doing our diminuendo 
wanted to get here last. And it works very well. We're actually doing a better diminuendo by crescendoing a little bit in the beginning in the left hand. change it up here, then change it every bar, it sounds okay. But if you don't, or you could change it in the middle of the bars, that's another possibility for pedal. That looks something like this, pedal, pedal, pedal. Let's try leaving it all in one pedal. It just seems like way too much to me. But it's still nice. So do whatever you like best for the pedal at the end, in that case, you know. Or keep experimenting. What I like to do is, it just takes time, you know. Even if I only know this piece of, to a certain point, I feel like it would take a few days to, you know, just let it sit with you, you know, sink into your mind, into your ears, and until you're hearing it during the day, and then you come back and maybe even forget about it, and come back and play the piece, and then you're you're much more con convic convicted. You have more conviction or convinced about the decisions, the interpretative decisions you want to make. Okay, so I know that didn't really sound very much like me trying to learn this piece because. Uh, because I already know it to a certain point. But I hope that gives you, maybe this video was more of an, um, sort of like a how to uh, make decisions in your piece of, you know, what, what to do, or just like le everything that's less, just like figuring out the notes. And we did look at a lot of fingering. So that should help very well. So when you come to your master class, uh, to my master class rather, uh, play this piece for me and we'll work on it together. That will be a blast. Master class happening in Montreal on October 14th at Piano Balzuc on Saint Laurent. Uh, and that's it guys. So there you have it. WC Arabesque. I hope you really enjoy this video. I hope it's it's gr uh, super useful to you. I know a lot of people are playing this piece and it is a fantastic piece. So enjoy it. Peace out. Happy practicing.